Hey, Shalom, Captain OC. Officer Elijah. And we're here with another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. Today, uh, we're going over a topic that was uh, suggested um, that the people want to hear about. So today's topic is how to overcome being antisocial. Now, when I first read that description, I thought of antisocial, you know, as being somebody that doesn't like to talk with others. But when we actually read the definition, we see it, it goes even further than that. Let's read that definition of antisocial. It says, what is antisocial personality disorder? Antisocial personality disorder is a condition characterized by a lack of empathy and regard for other people. So it's when you're pretty much a selfish individual. You don't care about anybody else. Read. People who have antisocial personality disorder have little or no regard for right or wrong. Uh huh. They antagonize and often act insensitively insens- uh, uh-huh. or in an unfeeling manner. Uh-huh. Individuals with this disorder may lie, lie, engage in aggressive or violent behavior, uh-huh. and participate in criminal activity. So, in a long story short, you jacked up. You are a um, sinful individual. Therefore, because you know how you are as a person, you don't like to talk to anybody else. So let's let's show you that in the scriptures. Go to Sirach 13 and verse 15. The reason why you are antisocial, the reason why you don't want to be around other brothers and sisters is because you know how you are yourself. You know you lie, you steal, you're, malip, you're manipulative, <laughs> malip, manipulative, so on and so forth. You know that your actions are that way, so you don't want to be around anybody else. Read that. Book of Sirach, chapter 13, verse 15. Uh Uh-huh. Every beast loveth his like. Every what? Every beast loveth his like. Read. And every man loveth his neighbor. Uh Uh-huh. All flesh consort according to kind. Uh Uh-huh. And a man will cleave to his like. Right. So all flesh consorteth to kind. So the reason why you don't want to be around people is because you don't want to be treated the same way you treat others, which is wrong. You don't treat them according to the commandments. Now, the other reason why people are sometimes antisocial is because of things that happened to them in the past. You know, they may have been raped. They may have been molested. They may have been abused on some shape or form. So now, you know, they've been shell-shocked. I don't really like to speak to people, so on and so forth. So we're going to show you how to overcome that, and we're going to show you why you are like that. Job 11 and 16. So how, why are you like the way you are? Because of things that happened in the past, has now shaped you, and now you're letting what happened 10, 12, 20, 30, 40 years ago affect your current day. Read that. Job chapter 11, verse 16. Uh-huh. Because thou shalt forget thy misery. Because, start at 15, actually. Verse 15. Uh-huh. For then shalt thou lift up thy face Read. without spot. Uh-huh. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear. Read. Because thou shalt forget thy misery. Because what? Thou shalt forget thy misery. The Bible is telling us that we must forget the misery. The things that happened to us in the past, we got to let those things go. We can't continue to let those things hold us down. Read. And remember it as waters that pass away. And remember it as waters that pass away. From there, let's go to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. So we're going into why you have become antisocial. Outside of because you're a wicked individual and you don't want to be around anybody else, I don't want to be around that brother or sister that because they act like me. Well, that's a wicked statement. That means you ain't right. So you got to change. You got to repent. Read that. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Uh Uh-huh. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, Uh but this one thing I do. This one thing I do. Read. Forgetting those things which are behind. Doing what? Forgetting those things which are behind. Uh Uh-huh. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. So the Bible's telling us we got to let those things go that happened in the past. Read. Verse 14, Uh I praise toward the mark. I what? I praise toward the mark. I press toward the mark. Read. For the prize of the high calling of God in in Christ Jesus. Right. So we got to press toward the mark, becoming that new creature in Christ, learning how to interact and socialize with our brothers and sisters. And what happens, um, and and I'm glad that we read that definition because it says clearly that being antisocial is a personality disorder. It's not normal for you to be um, withdrawn from other brothers and sisters. That's not a normal action or a normal, normal personality trait. So you got to truly examine yourself and admit that the way you are rolling, the spirit you're rolling in, 
is not according to the scriptures on how he wants us to act. Second Ezra 14 and verse 34. Second Ezra chapter 14 and verse 34. This is what we must do when we come into this truth and we have a spirit of being antisocial. Second Ezra chapter 14 verse 34. Uh-huh. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding. You will what? Subdue your own understanding. Because a lot of people have resorted to acting like this and behaving like that, but you did that on your own understanding, on your own accord, according to what America told you. Read. And reform your heart. Uh-huh. Ye shall be kept alive. Right. So you got to forget and subdue, meaning you got to die to your own understanding, and you got to do what this Bible says. And we're going to show you what the Bible says. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 in verse 9. Does the Bible tell us to be alone and don't talk to anybody and wear black every day? And No. The Bible is not a uh, movement that you can do by yourself. You can't fulfill the scriptures um, just dwelling with yourself. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. Uh -huh. Two are better than one. What did the Bible say? Two are better than one. Read. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Uh -huh. For if they fall the one will lift up his fellow. If they fall, one can lift up his fellow. When you are antisocial, you don't have anybody to, re to resort on. All you got is yourself. That's how you got the uh, single ladies anthem. Because you want to do bad all by yourself. No, the Bible's not about that. Read. But woe to him that is alone. What did the Bible say? Woe to him that is alone. The Bible says destruction to him that is alone. Read. When he falleth. For he has not another to help him up. Right, because you don't have somebody to help you up. You don't have a friend. You don't have somebody that you can depend on to get counsel, to get financial help if you come into financial issues, so on and so forth. So you got to get out of that spirit. Proverbs 3 and 5. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. So the Bible says two are better than one. What is he telling you? You got to make friends. All right, read. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Do what? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Read. And lean not unto thine own understanding. And do what? Lean not unto thine own understanding. When you're antisocial, you're leaning into your own understanding on how to cope with whatever problems it may have been. Maybe you've been scarred in a past friendship. Maybe damage has been done to you in the past, as we mentioned earlier, in the form of rape, abuse, mental abuse, verbal abuse, whatever it was. So now you resort to how you want to cope and deal with it. No, the Bible says, lean not unto thine own understanding. Sirach chapter 6 and verse 2. We're going to show you what happens when you continue to resort to your own thoughts and leaning on yourself. Read that. Sirach chapter 6 verse 2. Uh -huh. Extol not thyself in the counsel of thine own heart. Do what? Extol not thyself in the counsel of thine own heart. Right, you can't extol your own counsel. Read. That thy soul be not torn in pieces uh -huh. as a bull straying alone. As a what? As a bull straying alone. What happened when a bull strays alone? He gets eaten. He gets eaten alive. The lions see you hunting by yourself. That's why they roll in packs. So they're not uh, vulnerable to the attacks. But when you're antisocial, you're out there by yourself. You're not dealing with anybody you want to keep to yourself. You become a prey to the predators. And we know who the predator is. Satan. It says he, he's, a, uh, he's seeking whom he can devour. So how do we overcome it? What does the Bible specifically say about that spirit? Proverbs 18 and 24. Let's get into it. Does God tell us to be mean and not to talk to anybody and to keep to ourselves and never have friends? Or does it tell us the opposite? Let's see. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. Uh-huh. A man that have friends. A what? A man that have friends. Now he's going to tell you. A man that have friends does what? Must show himself friendly. What did the Bible say? Must show himself friendly. You must show yourself friendly. You got to engage. You got to smile. You got to speak to a brother or sister. Don't say nobody talks to me. Nobody wants to do. No. A man that has friends showeth himself friendly. So that falls upon you. Read. And there is a friend that stick closer than a brother. Right. And what you'll find is throughout that engaging with different brothers and sisters, your spirit will begin to bond with some people on high levels. And it says that that friend, that friendship that you bond will be at a higher level than your own blood brothers or sisters. But you must first show yourself friendly. Sirach 6 and 5. 
How do you show yourself friendly? I'm going to give you an example of how you show yourself friendly. Book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 5. Uh -huh. Sweet language. Do what? Sweet language. Sweet language. Meaning when you speak, it's not always negative. It's not always nagging, complaining. What did the Bible say? Sweet language uh -huh. will multiply friends. Will do what? Multiply friends. But you say you can't find friends. I don't like this. I don't because your words, your tone, the way you speak, the words that are coming out of your mouth are not uh, sweet language. Read it again. It says sweet language will multiply friends. Read. And a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. You see that in the way you speak, that's what you'll get back. It's the oldest saying in the book. Treat others how you want to be treated. Do unto others how you want to be treated. It's that simple. From there, go to Hebrews 3 and 13. So we're going over how to overcome that antisocial spirit, and it's very simple. Stop being antisocial and be friendly to brothers and sisters. Read that. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. Uh-huh. But exhort one another daily. Uh-huh. While it is called today. Read. Lest any of you be hardened. Be what? Be hardened. That's what happened to a lot of you. You become antisocial because you've been hardened through what? Through the deceitfulness of sin. So notice it said exhort one another daily. So this is a process of how you should behave on a normal basis, which is getting outside of your comfort zone and speaking to your brothers and sisters on a daily basis. Malachi 3 and 16. So what are we going through? We're going through how to overcome being antisocial. And as we pointed out earlier in this class, being antisocial is a personality disorder. Read that. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Then they that feared the Lord uh -huh. spake often one to another. What did they do? Spake often one to another. When you truly fear God, you're going to speak to your brothers and sisters. Why? Because you see God in them. How can a man say he loved God and hated his own brother? If you see God in one another, you want to be around the brothers and sisters. You don't want to be to yourself. Read. And the Lord hearkened. And heard it, mm -hmm. and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. For them that feared the Lord. So, we almost done. In closing, now when we're telling you to reach out and be friendly, we're not saying it's always going to be roses and, and lilies. That's not what we're saying. So, when you do that, we're going to get you ready for what's going to happen. But you got to put yourself out there. Go to Matthew chapter 18 and verse 15, and we're going to prove to you that things are going to happen that's not according to plan when you're getting out of that antisocial spirit. Everybody's not going to be friendly. Everybody's not going to love you. It's not going to be all roses and peachy keen. Read that. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. How do we know that? The Bible wrote this scripture. Read. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee. If what? Thy brother should trespass against so thee. So your brother or your sister may trespass against you. Those things happen within a friendship. Read. Go and tell him his fault uh -huh. between thee and him alone. Read. If he shall hear thee, uh -huh. thou hast gained thy brother. But if he hear you, he will gain. you will gain your brother. Meaning, hey, this such and such just offended me. He says, you know what? What you said, that's right. And y'all get over it. But why I went there is to show you that these things, this law was set up in place for how to handle these issues, these different spirits gelling together. God gave us a way to overcome it, not for you to withdraw back into yourself and don't ever reach out and talk to anybody again, but how to uh, build and become better after that. Give me Sirach chapter 27 and verse 21. Sirach chapter 27, verse 21. Uh-huh. As for a wound. As for a wound, meaning that offense, you and two had issues. Read. It may be bound up. It may be bound up, meaning you can fix it. Read. And after reviling, uh -huh. there may be reconcilement. They may, they may be a reconciling, all right? That means y'all going to come back together. Things are going to get patched up. Hey, brother, I'm sorry I said this, sis. I'm sorry I did that, said that. Whatever it is, it can be fixed. Read. But he that berayeth secrets. But he that berayeth secrets, read. Is without hope. Is without hope. You can't trust a brother or sister that tells your deepest details to everybody in the world those situations the bible says uh, -uh you, you you cut those individuals off but it's a normal offense you you can build with that that's what matthew 18 comes in and y'all work through it so ephesians 4 and 3 and then we got one more scripture so like i said we know we're dealing with people that deal with this spirit 
Um, you may not want to, but I'm going to show you what God says. For us to get the kingdom of heaven, you're going to have to get out of that spirit of being antisocial. Read that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Uh-huh. Endeavoring to Doing keep. Doing what? Endeavoring. Endeavoring, meaning it's going to be work. It's going to take work. Read. Endeavoring to keep the unity uh -huh. of the spirit and the bond of peace. You see that? We got to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of of peace last scripture proverbs 13 and 20 so like i said it's not going to be easy i'm not saying you're going to change overnight but what i'm saying is these things have to be implemented in our lives you have to stop being antisocial. read that proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 uh-huh he that walketh with wise men he that what walketh with wise men he that walketh with wise men meaning you have friends you have companions you have counselors you have mentors who are above you in understanding and knowledge. Read. Shall be wise. That is the only way you're going to be a wise man or a wise woman. You got to put yourself around these brothers and sisters to gain their experience, to gain their wisdom, to gain their knowledge, so you know how to deal eventually. Read. But a companion of fools. But a what? Companion of fools. Read. Shall be destroyed. You see that? But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Meaning if you lean on your own heart and your own understanding and you're your own counselor and you're the only person that's right, you're a fool. You're walking down a life of destruction. So we pray you understand um, the, 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 the reason why you must change your antisocial antics and why you must come into this Bible and learn how to show yourself friendly, learn how to speak to your brothers and sisters, and become as Christ was. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.